Good happy Thursday evening. I'm Riley King and welcome to this edition of Good Evening New Hampshire. Let's begin with your local news. First up, New Hampshire, Massachusetts police crack down on distracted driving. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9, Suzanne Roantree. Do you need to replace your roof this year? Call Century Roofing today to arrange a free estimate. Call now to take advantage of our spring special and get $500 off your total roof replacement. Century Roofing, we've got you covered. As you know, as you drive down the roadways, people are constantly on their cell phones. Crossing the border between Massachusetts and New Hampshire, the speed limit may remain the same, but how and when you use your cell phones are quite different. New Hampshire has a hands-free law, while Massachusetts has a texting law. Massachusetts hasn't completely gone hands-free, so you need to know uh, certainly where they are and where an infraction may be being committed. Salem police today pulled over a handful of drivers traveling from Massachusetts. I was on my phone. I was working with my Pandora app. So, yeah, I guess stuff is different up here compared to Lawrence or Methuen or anything. There are spotting people who are distracted drivers. So it was not just cell phone, it could have been anything else. Including reaching down to pick something up, applying makeup, or fiddling with your touch screen. Experts say if you want to get from point A to point B, focus on driving. And take notice, even hands-free doesn't mean you're safe. Is it better to not have the phone in your hand, have two hands on the wheel? Sure. But uh, in terms of what the, the science shows, um, you know, people should try to limit their conversations the higher the intensity of the conversation, the more distracting it is. Now, police say choosing to be a distracted driver not only affects you, but it also affects other drivers and their passengers on the roadways as well as pedestrians. Live in Manchester, Suzanne Rontree, WMUR News 9. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Always pay attention to the road, everyone. Portsmouth chief who worked scene of bombing prepares to run in Boston Marathon. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9, Jennifer Crompton. Portsmouth's police chief is getting in his last few miles before running in the Boston Marathon on Monday, part of his regimen to stay in shape physically and mentally. He says he started running as a Boston homicide detective to think through cases and decompress. Since then, Bob Murner has run over a dozen marathons across the country. This will be his fourth in Boston, but the first there since the bombing. He was a longtime supervisor with the Boston Police Department working that day. Everybody that was there, especially police officers, firefighters, EMTs, uh, we took it personal that, that they blew up our marathon. I was uh, in between uh, Kenmore Square and the finish line at the time of the, uh, uh, the bombs went off. He and his officers got halfway there by vehicle and ran the rest of the way. And shortly after arriving at the finish line, I went into crime scene mode, started closing down streets. For the next four days, he oversaw the crime scene, then was involved in the manhunt, one of the first to arrive at the boat where the surviving suspect was hiding. For the next three and a half hours uh, with Bill Evans, I ran the, uh, the scene at the boat in Watertown, uh, subsequently leading to the capture of Zokas and I. He says the way of doing business after 4-15-13 has changed forever. Monday's marathon, the first in six years to fall on the actual anniversary when he'll be thinking about all the lives that were changed that day. The most of the race will be that grueling 26 miles, but I think that last couple of miles coming in is going to be a completely different feeling for me. In Portsmouth, Jennifer Crompton, WMUR News 9. 
Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. State lottery officials sue federal government over gaming rules. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9, Kristen Carosa. This is not your kid's sandbox. This is the place that brings your backyard dreams to life. The New Hampshire Lottery Commission is now fighting to save the millions in revenue from online sales after the federal government reinterpreted a decades-old law. We have an obligation to protect the revenues for the state, fund education for schools in New Hampshire, and that's a lot of money. The lawsuit filed on behalf of the state comes after the Department of Justice changed its opinion in 2018 on what kind of gaming can be done online related to the Wire Act, which was established in 1961 to combat illegal organized sports betting. It says that the Wire Act is, covers more things than it had said previously it does and doesn't really say Here's the things that are a problem. Here's the things that aren't a problem. The state is now looking for clarity quickly to better understand how it will impact school funding. And I want to be able to report to the folks I report to in the, under the dome how much money we're going to expect to make in the next two years. That's, I mean, it's, it just follows in that it's millions and millions of dollars of funding. And as you've probably noticed, there's some issues in education funding in the state. And while the state hopes the court can help interpret the law, it's also looking forward to ensure the Wire Act only applies to certain sports betting activities. It makes it clear that the Wire Act does not apply to the states or their agencies or their officers. Now the judge is taking this under advisement but did tell the court today he realizes this is a pressing issue for the state of New Hampshire. Live in studio, Kristen Carosa, WNUR News 9. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Man killed in avalanche near Tuckerman Ravine. Let's take a listen to this video from WMUR News 9. GMI Asphalt is currently accepting job applications to join our team. We have an aggressive pay scale. Health insurance benefits, both men and women, are urged to contact the office of GMI Asphalt or visit us on the web at gmiasphalt.com. And we do begin with that breaking news. A man is dead after an avalanche in Tuckerman Ravine. It happened a couple of hours ago in the popular climbing spot on Mount Washington. Fish and game officials tell News 9 that rescuers did administer CPR but were not able to save that man. The mountain was under a moderate danger level for avalanches today. And that terrain can be very dangerous this time of year. And those who have experience with hiking and climbing there say precautions are always necessary. Well, Mike, uh, chairman, owner of Redline Guiding in Intervale, has experience with what people face in Tuckerman. The upper portions of it are exceptionally steep, and uh, it, that snow is barely holding on at times, and it can break away. And even into the safe season, I talk about those dangers from ice and rock above. Um, it melts, and it can break away. Redline guides say if you are planning on going into that area, you should research the avalanche danger ahead of time and also get avalanche training. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Missing Doverman found dead, police say. A missing man from Dover has been found dead, Dover police said Thursday. Police had been searching for Samuel Gray, 62, of Dover. Gray was last seen riding his bicycle on April 2nd, police said. Following up on a tip, authorities found Gray's body in the area of the railroad tracks between the Spaulding Turnpike and Little Worth Road on Thursday morning, police said. 
And we're going to switch gears now, and let's go on into your weather. Weather right now is clear, 48 degrees. And your weather for tonight, fair skies, lows in the lower 30s. Your weather for tomorrow, mostly cloudy and milder, highs in the mid-50s. And for tomorrow night, cloudy and showers, lows in the mid-lower to mid-40s. And switching gears now, let's go on into your sports. Good evening, everyone. I'm Riley King, and welcome to Sports with Riley King. Let's begin. First up, Boston Marathon runner Amy Skeldoni from Manchester. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9, Jamie Steeston. introducing Boston Marathon charity runner Amy Scladoni from Manchester. She will wear bib number 26895. This will be her fourth marathon overall, her first Boston Marathon. After volunteering in Boston for 10 years, Amy decided to join the field of runners. Amy lost a loved one to suicide when she was younger, so she's decided to run and raise money for Camp Kita, which is a safe place for kids to learn to deal with the unspeakable and fierce emotions of losing a parent to suicide. Yeah, so Camp Kita is a bereavement camp for kids who have lost loved ones to suicide. Um, I've raised over $13,000, uh, so I'm pretty proud of that. But, uh, you know, this is a great a great opportunity to bring a little light to that, but also to um, to get out there and, and kind of feel the energy of Boston. Boston is the race. Um, all runners kind of have this at the center that goes around Boston, and um, I've spent 10 years volunteering, so... Uh, to be able to be on the other side and as a runner, it's pretty cool. Amy's got some great energy. She's going to do really well on Monday. Hi. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. We wish Amy the very best. And take a look at this. A sweet center for three Boston Marathon runners at WMUR. Shout out to the bakery at Market Basket in Manchester for catering this beautiful treat. We have Alicia McDevitt, Jamie Stasting, and Jim Lloyd, who will be running in the Boston Marathon. We wish them very Good luck in the Boston Marathon this year. And the Boston Marathon is on Monday, April 15th. And it's also the anniversary of the Boston Marathon. The Boston Bombing Marathon. That happened a few years ago. Manchester Monarchs, Kelly Cup playoffs round one game three will be at snhu arena on wednesday april 17th 2019 at seven o'clock p.m and the new hampshire fisher cats they play tonight at hartford goats at seven o'clock p.m And the Boston Bruins, they play tonight at 7 p.m. Toronto Maple Leafs at Boston Bruins, game one, round one of the playoffs. And you can watch it on NBCS in Nesson. 
Go Boston Bruins. We have our Boston Bruins shirt on. Go Boston Bruins. Hopefully they win the first round of the game. And the Boston Red Sox, they play tonight at 7.10 p.m. Toronto Blue Jays at Boston Red Sox. And that's it for this edition of Sports with Riley King. I hope you all enjoyed this edition of Sports with Riley King. I'll see you back here tomorrow night for another edition of Sports with Riley King. Good night, everyone. Bye. Okay, and there you go. Sports with Riley King. And switching gears, now let's go on into your arts and entertainment. Mark Cohen to play a couple of New Hampshire dates. Take a look. Very cool. He will be coming to New Hampshire for a couple of concerts. And events happening this evening in New Hampshire. Livingston Taylor happening right now at the Palace Theater. Who's alive anyway? Drew Carey, Greg Corps, Jeff B, Dave, and Joel Murray is happening right now at the Colonial Theater. Million Dollar Quarter happening right now at the Capitol Center of Arts. And in significance, a play by Terry Johnson is happening right now at the Winnipesaukee Playhouse. And those are events happening this evening in New Hampshire. And tomorrow in New Hampshire at the Casino Ballroom in Hampton Beach. Eddie Money will be having his concert tomorrow night in New Hampshire at Casino Ballroom in Hampton Beach. It starts at 8 p.m. tomorrow night. Very cool indeed. And we want to hear from you. Let us know what your favorite Eddie Money song is. Comment below and let us know. We want to hear from you. Have a wonderful night, everyone. That did it for this edition of Good Evening, New Hampshire. See you back here tomorrow night for another edition of Good Evening, New Hampshire. Good night, everyone. Bye.